OK, so please be aware that this video uses differentiation skills that we'll be looking at in the next section. Um, the reason why I'm doing it here is because we've been looking at convex, concave. Um, so you can always work forward, then come back and have a go at these questions later. OK, um, so the questions I'm going to go through, uh, find the values of x for which each of these curves are convex. Uh, so we've got y equals x to the 4 plus 6x cubed plus 12x squared to start off with. Um, so we understand that a curve is convex when the second derivative is positive. OK, now number one, um, we should all be able to do that one. Uh, number two and number three will use differentiation skills we haven't met yet. OK, so we're going to go straight into number one. So what I need to do is find the y by the x. So differentiating this, we're going to get 4x cubed plus 18x squared plus 24x. So bog standard differentiation there. Then we need to find the second derivative. So d2y by dx squared. So we would get 12x squared plus 36x plus 24. So the curve is convex when the second derivative is positive. So we want to solve the inequality 12x squared plus 36x plus 24 is greater than 0. Now we could divide through by 12 to make this easier for ourselves. So x squared plus 3x plus 2 is greater than 0. This is a quadratic that factorises, so that's x plus 2, x plus 1 is greater than 0. So we're looking at a parabola that's going through minus 2 and minus 1. Where is the parabola above the x-axis? It's above it there for that bit and there. So when x is less than negative 2, or when x is greater than minus 1. OK, and so they uh, are the values of x for which the curve is convex. OK, so that's number 1. So for number 2, When you differentiate the natural logarithm of some function, okay, the trick to differentiating that is that the interior function goes into the denominator and the derivative of the interior function goes into the numerator. So we have 2x over x squared plus 1. Now in order to differentiate that, I would have to use the quotient rule. So the quotient rule for differentiation goes by starting at the bottom, working its way to the top. So you've got the top, sorry, the bottom, rather, get it the right way around. The bottom times the derivative of the top, take away the top times the derivative of the bottom. So the bottom times the derivative of the top, so x squared plus 1 times 2, take away the top times the derivative of the bottom, so 2x times 2x, over the bottom squared. So simplifying this, we're going to have 2x squared plus 2, multiplying out that bracket, take away 4x squared, all over x squared plus 1 squared. So simplifying this, we've got uh, 2 take away 2x squared over x squared plus 1 squared. So we understand that the curve is convex if the second derivative is positive. OK. So we're going to need to solve 2, take away 2x squared over x squared plus 1 squared is greater than 0. Now, x squared plus 1 is always positive. When you square that, you'll always get a positive value as well. So actually, all I'm interested in then is when the numerator is greater than 0. 
because I know that I'm always dividing by a positive number. So I can effectively multiply up by that and ignore it. I'm just going to look at this. So dividing through by 2, we get 1 minus x squared is greater than 0. So that's 1 take away x, 1 plus x is greater than 0. So if we draw a little diagram, this is a parabola. Okay, sad face because it's a minus x squared. Minus 1 and 1 is where it goes through on the x-axis. Where is the parabola above the x-axis? It's above it there. And so x must be between minus 1 and 1. That is where the curve is convex. Okay, so that's number 2. Right, number three. Now, number three, in order to differentiate this, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. So we've got the bottom, x minus 1 squared, times by the derivative of the top, which is e to the x. Take away the top, e to the x, times by the derivative of the bottom. Now, in order to differentiate x minus 1 squared, you could either multiply the brackets out, but easier way is to use the chain rule. So that would be 2x minus 1 to the 1. All over the bottom squared. So x minus 1 to the 4. Right, so I'm going to want to simplify this because I'm going to need to differentiate it again. So what I'll do is I will factor e to the x. Well, actually, uh, let's divide through by x minus 1 first, because that simplifies things. There's a factor of x minus 1 in all three terms, so I can deal with that first. So I've got x minus 1 e to the x, take away 2 e to the x over x minus 1 cubed. OK, that makes things a little bit easier. If I factor the e to the x out now of the numerator, I've got x minus 1 take away 2 e to the x over x minus 1 cubed. And so I've got x take away 3 e to the x over x minus 1 cubed. So this is my dy by dx. Right, the second derivative. So the second derivative... I'm going to have to differentiate this again using the quotient rule. So we have the bottom, x minus 1 cubed, times by the derivative of the top. Now you can either multiply that out, or you can use the product rule. Now, even if I multiply it out, I'd still have to use the product rule, because I'm going to have an x e to the x in there. So I'm going to go straight in with the product rule, which is the first times the derivative of the second, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is just 1. OK, so we've got the bottom times the derivative of the top. Take away the top times the derivative of the bottom. Differentiating that using the chain rule is 3x minus 1 squared all over the bottom squared, which is x minus 1 uh, to the 6. Whew, right. OK, so next, just like we had a factor of x minus 1 here, here, and here, I've got a factor of x minus 1 squared here, here, and here. So I can divide through by that. So I've got the x, a single x minus 1 left here. Now I'm going to um, factor the e to the x out of this. So I would have x take away 3 plus 1, which is x take away 2, e to the x. Take away, now I've divided through by x minus 1 squared, remember, so that's gone. 3x minus 3 e to the x, all over this x minus 1 now to the 4, so I divided through by x minus 1 squared. Now I can factor the e to the x out of the numerator, and then... I'm going to have to factorise what's left. So, well, um, rather, rather than factorise, expand out what's left. It'll probably be easier. 
So expanding those brackets, x squared take away 3x plus 2. I'm also going to expand those out, so take away 3x plus 9. I've got the e to the x on the outside because I factored it out over x minus 1 to the 4. Right, so the numerator, we've got x squared, uh, take away 6x now, plus 11, e to the x, over x minus 1 to the 4. Now I know that the curve is convex when the second derivative is positive. So I'm looking at solving this inequality, which looks... Absolutely horrific. However, using the similar tricks that we've thought we've looked at in the previous example, x minus 1 to the 4 is always greater than or equal to 0. It's equal to 0 when x is 1. Um, but this function would be defined where x is not equal to 1. So I don't need to worry about that. So that means that if x can't be 1, the denominator is always positive, because when you do something to the, uh, a real number to the power of 4, when it's not 0, is always positive. So I can ignore that. And e to the x is always positive as well for all real values of x. So really, all I'm interested in is when x squared minus 6x plus 11 is greater than 0. OK? Now, if I uh, complete the square on that, I get x take away 3 squared, uh, take away 9 plus 11. So x take away 3 squared plus 2 is greater than 0. Well, x minus 3 squared is greater than or equal to 0. Plus 2 will always be greater than 0, regardless of the value of x that you have. So this is true for all real values of x. And so the curve must always be convex, OK? So this curve is convex for all real values of x. Now, if you want to learn a bit of um, university-level maths of, of abbreviation here, then for all is written as an upside-down A, for all x belonging to the real numbers. OK, so you could use that, utilise that notation if you wanted to. OK, so that is a mix and a medley of differentiation skills, uh, some of which is beyond where we currently are in the playlist. So you would have to look ahead to see where these skills come from and how to develop them and then come back and then have a go at these problems.